Hello everyone and welcome back to another guide for blood magic. Today we'll be going over how to make a tier 3 blood altar, the magician blood orb, imbued slates, the common tartar gem, and more sigils and runes! Yay! So let's hop right into it. To access all of these items, you need to build a tier 3 blood altar. To upgrade it, you'll need 20 blank runes and 4 glowstone blocks. To make enough blank runes, it will cost you 160 stone blocks, 40 to turn into blank slates, using 40,000 blood. Now that you have your materials, you're going to place your blank runes one block below and two blocks out from the previous level, leaving a one block gap in between. This can be filled with any block you desire. Now, since you only have 20 blank runes, 5 will go on each side, leaving the corners empty. Now, when you leave your corners empty, if we start on the layer of the blank runes, on the 1, 2, 3, 4th block up, you would place your 4 glowstones in each corner. Now, to make sure they're in the right place, the glowstone and the blank runes will have a 2 block gap in between or they will be on the block level one above from your blood altar, as you can see. Depending on what materials you have at your disposal, instead of using glowstone, you can use sea lanterns. So if you start next to an ocean monument and are able to upgrade to a tier three altar before you reach the nether, simply put sea lanterns. Many of the new items will need the next level of slate. To make an imbued slate, First, you need a reinforced slate and 5,000 blood in your blood altar. Just like everything else, right click it in and wait for it to process. And there you go, you have an imbued slate. The Rune of Capacity is one of the most useful runes that can be crafted. It is made with four stone, one in each corner, a blank rune in the center with three buckets, one on either side or and above the blank rune, and an imbued slate in the bottom center, and this will give you your rune of capacity. Now, what this does is it increases the amount of blood your altar can hold by 2,000, and it will also increase the amount of blood your buffer tank can hold by 10% and the stack so the more runes of capacity you have the more blood your altar will hold the displacement rune is crafted with four stone one in each corner a blank rune in the center three water buckets one on either side and above the blank rune and an imbued slate in the bottom center now what this does is it increases the rate that blood is transferred from your main tank to the buffer tank by 1.2 times. So if you have one rune, it will up the rate from 20 to 24. Two runes will be 24 to 28.8 and so on and so forth. And here is a little table to show you just exactly how much the rate goes up. To make the Magician Blood Orb, you need a gold block and 25,000 blood to make it. Now, keep in mind that a normal blood altar can only hold 10,000 blood. This is where the Rune of Capacity comes in handy. Now, after you have crafted 8 of these Runes of Capacity, you will be able, your altar will then be able to hold 26,000 blood. And only 25 of that would need to craft your orb, so you have 1,000 left over to do as you wish. Simply take the gold block, place it in, and then wait for the process, and you will have your magician's blood orb. Now that you have your new blood orb, what this does, it increases the amount of blood you can hold in your network all the way up to 150,000 life points. This is useful for all the new runes we will go over shortly. Over on the Hellfire Forge, we will create the common Tartaric Gem. You'll need an empty lesser Tartaric Gem, one block of gold, one diamond, an imbued slate, 
and 50 world quality from a full Tartaric gem. This will create the common Tartaric gem that will increase the amount of wills you can hold from 256 to 1024. The Sigil of Magnetism is created using 2 gold ingots, 1 block of iron, 1 string, and 10 will quality from a common Tartaric gem or higher. Take the reagent, go ashes, reagent, imbued slate, wait for the process, and then you have your sigil. What the sigil of magnetism does is it will attract items that are close to or up to four blocks away from you. Normally, you have to be right on top to draw them in, but by shift right clicking the sigil, it will draw items in from up to four blocks away. So I don't even have to run in line, I just have to run by them. And all of these diamonds are now mine. Now one thing to keep in note is that when this sigil is active, it will drain 50 life points from your blood network every 10 seconds. So if you just have a bunch of stuff on the ground, or if a creeper accidentally blows up your chests, you just activate this to suck it all in. The Sigil of the Blood Lamp is created by using 1 Glowstone Block, 2 Redstone Dust, and 1 Torque, and 10 Will Quality from a common Tartaric Gem or higher. Ashes, Reagent, and an Imbued Slate will start the process to get your Sigil. And pop comes your Sigil of the Blood Lamp. What the sigil does is it will create a light source at the cost of 10 blood from your network. But it is a one time cost and it will not remove blood from your network over time. As long as the light is active. But how do these lights compare to torches? Well, a standard torch emits light in a 7 block, I'm sorry, in a 6 block radius from where you are. So, as you can see, I have it on our little floating islands here. It does a pretty decent area. But by hopping over to our other island here, we have our little blood lamp. And it actually emits light in a seven block radius from itself. So it is one block stronger than a torch. But if we come over to our higher island here, you can see that we are emitting light, but there's no torch is because blood lamps since they are on since they are since they are their own entity they don't have to be placed on blocks like torches do so i can simply take a couple dirt stack it up right click with my blood lamp remove the dirt and now i have a floating little blood orb or blood light i should say but one good thing about these is I don't have to just place these on blocks, if I want to light up my house over there, I simply right click and it will throw a blood lamp at it. Come over and you can see there is a little blood light. Now if you right click it from a distance it will go until it hits a block. So if I just throw it in the air like that, and I've just wasted 10 blood. And there it goes. So that will never return. So that is one thing to keep in mind is that when you right click with it, it will launch it towards an object and then it will create a blood light where it lands. The sigil of elemental affinity is created by using one obsidian, a lava sigil, a water sigil, an air sigil, and 30 will quality from a common tartaric gem or higher. Ashes reagent and an imbued slate will start the process and there you go you have your sigil of elemental affinity what this sigil does is it will make you immune to certain environmental damage one of them is drowning so as you can see i'm in this little pool of water and i'm now taking damage if i activate the sigil i will then be able to breathe under water now I won't gain the bubbles back until I break the surface, but I also won't lose any health while I'm underwater. 
Now, one thing to keep in note is that when the sigil is active, it will remove 200 blood from your blood network every 10 seconds. Now, it will remove blood over time and not per damage taken. So keep that in mind, if you just have it active in the background, it will continually drain blood whenever it is active and not when you take it. This sigil does not only protect you from drowning, but it will make you immune to fire and lava damage. To show it to you, lava, fire burns, but if I activate the sigil, not only will I be able to walk through fire, I can swim in lava. Again, it's not that fast, but it's still better than taking continued damage from it. And again, it drains blood over time and not per damage. Now I'm currently 15 blocks off the ground, and at my current health, this fall will certainly kill me. But by activating the sigil and going for the leap, I'm perfectly fine. Since we've used an air sigil, this one will prevent any fall damage while active. And just to say it again, this takes blood out of your blood network over time and not per damage. The sigil of holding is created using one chest, two string, one leather, and 20 will quality from a common tartar gem or higher. Ashes, reagent, and an imbued slate starts the process. Now, what the sigil of holding will do is it can hold five different sigils in one inventory slot. And as you can see in the bottom right corner of my screen, that is where you then access the sigils. I have loaded up my sigil of holding with various other ones, as you can see in the bottom right corner. And to access the menu, you simply press the default hotkey of H. And this will give you your inventory for sigil of holding. So I have my Sears, Air, Winter's Breath, Water, and Elemental Affinity. So if I take my Air Sigil and fly all the way over to my Blood Altar, I can then hold Shift and use the scroll wheel to access my Sears Sigil to get all the information about my Blood Altar here or what's in my Blood Network. Shift scroll wheel back to the air sigil to fly all the way over to my little pond area. Scroll wheel to the sigil of winter's breath. I hold shift and right click to activate it. And now I can walk across to get to my diamonds over here. And then I shift right click to deactivate it. And then I can take my water sigil in this nice little rain we have and place the water on top of my little diamond fort here. And there you go. And if I want, I can re resist all elemental damage by activating my Sigil of Elemental Affinity. Now, since I now have that active, if I want, I can then go to my other Sigils, like Sigils of Winter Breath, to activate that. So in your Sigil of Holding, you can have multiple Sigils activated. And you can just keep them running forever however long you want or until your blood network runs out of blood. So I'm going to go and turn these off. And that is the sigil. Now you have all you need to continue your journey through blood magic. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe for more Minecraft guides and the occasional other video. Thank you all for watching and have a good day. Bye.